And so by shifting and becoming aware of my, my thought, I could either choose this word or this thought, you know, to that's negative, which will continue a negative momentum, or I can pause, I can stop and deliberately choose a better yeah. feeling thought. I can choose something that feels more empowering, just even our words, you know. So that right. became my own personal work. And then books started downloading through me. People yeah. started asking me to coach them. I mean, it's just, there's so much in the journey. It goes beyond five mm-hmm. minutes, but that really that's is right. really how it started for me. Yeah. Well, that it, it, it's interesting, uh, you know, most people, unfortunately, never learn this, right? Um, and and I've got my own thoughts around it and everything. But really, in the end, B-E-T-E, B-E-T-A-R. Your beliefs lead to your emotions. Your emotions uh, lead to your thoughts. Your thoughts lead to your feelings. Your feelings lead to your actions. Your actions lead to your results, right? So where do our beliefs come 100%. from? And most people like have never stopped and asked that question before. And most people don't realize that they're really a product of the programming they've ever, they've had ever since they were, came out of the womb. Like, it's not like, you know, if somebody's like in a dead end job making like 35 K, it's not like you came out of the womb and like beautiful baby, too bad. I'll never make more than 35 K. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, it, no, it, the reality God. is we're taught these things, but they, but we don't realize that our subconscious mind is the most powerful part of our mind. And it's what drives us without us even knowing it. And it is the automatic things that we do and the responses we have to all the different things in our life come from that. And usually if somebody's not getting where they want or doesn't have what they want or, you know, is lost in that way, it's because that subconscious has been programmed. It's driving them to the, it, it's not driving them in the way that they, they should be. They're not living from true choice, as you say, because they don't know to recognize those uh, responses to those things in their lives that are debilitating to their success, their potential and everything. Right. And so, yes. And that's, so real, that's the crux say, of it. Say, can I say something yeah. real quick? Yeah. yeah. So on that too, it's like with, with the choice that you have, it's like when you realize that, when you have an awareness of, I feel bad, I'm at least aware of that, mm-hmm. then I can do something about it. And that's where right. having an understanding of what's happening and then having knowledge of then what, how to shift it and knowing yeah. how to shift it. That's, that's everything. I mean, that's just exactly. pure freedom. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about, let's get into that. So, um, Let's start by, because I think the underpinning of this um, is desire, and I want to talk about that more in a second. So before we do get into to all of that, define desire for us. What does it mean? What does desire mean as you see it? Desire is something that we get an idea. There's an opening, something drops in. We either get the idea, someone says something, and then we go, ah, oh. it's like there's a Yes, I could eat even just for a meal, right? Uh, you know, I'm kind of getting hungry and it's like, I want to eat. Yeah, me too. And then everybody gets out. That just happened in my family an hour ago. It's like, you know, when every, yeah, I have three boys that are teenagers plus a, you know, man. So they're like, yeah, let's all eat. So that, that desire moves something, right? Everything gets created from desire. When we have a desire for something and say, Let's just say I had the desire to eat because my body was hungry and I shut it down for whatever reason. No, it's not time to eat or um, no, I need to watch what I'm eating or, you know, whatever excuse or belief that we have that's limiting or that, you know, and we're talking about just basic food stuff. But what if, like you're saying, I have this desire to and I have this idea to start my own business, but that part that... And and you were saying about beliefs. A belief is a thought, thought over and over and over again until there becomes evidence of it. And then we look at it and go, see, it's true. And then it gets mm-hmm. solidified as a belief. But before it was ever a thought, there was energy underneath it, either positive or negative. There was, mm-hmm. say, for example, there was worry or fear or doubt. And that's the biggest thing is that most people, and, and I found this out early on, I've been coaching for over mm. two decades and I've been certifying coaches on law of attraction since 2008 through the Quantum Success Coaching Academy. And every single time when you start to ask someone, what do you want? 
they naturally go, well, I don't want to lose the money and I don't want to take that risk and I don't want to gain weight or I don't want to lose my marriage or I don't want to, da, 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 right? I don't want to live alone. I don't want to. We're so accustomed to looking at what we do not want, which creates more resistance, right. which creates a projection of fear and the whole, like you were saying, well, right? That also so, happens because most people, most people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. So the only place they can go to is what they don't want because they know what that is, but yes. they don't know what they really want, you know? Um, so here's a trick. So yeah. here's a trick. Here's a trick for anybody that's like, yeah, that's true, Dave. I don't know what I want, <laughs> but I do, or I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't want, right? Here's, here's the thing that absolutely changed my life and my existence is that I don't want that. Okay. Then what do I want? Like literally what is the opposite of that? And just pull yourself out of it and think, well, I don't want to struggle. And then it makes the mind think, what is the polar opposite of struggle? Hmm, ease. Ooh, that'd be nice. What would ease, right? Because you were asking what's desire. That, ooh, that, ah, I'm, I like that. Let me just lean into that. That feels good. That expands us. Because ultimately, when desire comes from a place of moving us forward, it feels good. But, but if we have a, I want, I want this thing so I can prove to them, or it, there's still, there's still, you're going to do stuff. You're, you're going to take action. You know, it's going to get you some, um, success, but not like the aligned success right. of I'm doing it because I want to add light, support, create wealth, you know, whatever the positive, I want to change the world. I want to create this thing that's going to make people's lives better. When you're coming from a true place of, it's not just about me, it's about me, the clients, everybody win-win, that's full alignment. And then taking yep. that alignment, taking momentum, taking action from that place really depends on the inner game of the words that we choose, right? Just even saying can't or should or I miss or I'll try. These are words that are so um, powerless that they're based in lack. And then we're now focused back on what we don't want. Well, I don't want to feel that. I don't want to experience that. I don't want to keep being in, in lack. Okay, pause. What do you want? I don't know. Right. What's the opposite of lack? Abundance. Ah, yeah. okay. I want abundance.